Him. Would you work with stop working we believe what we sing about Jesus we worship you 
We praise you, Father. Come on, let's sing it. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, sing that again. You are here. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are a unique miracle work, promise king, light in the darkness. Oh my God, that is who you are. Come on, sing it out. The way you make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. Oh my God, that is who you are. You are here. You're touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
That is who you are. That is who you are. My faithful God, my faithful friend. You never sleep, you never slumber. You never stop working. You never stop working. I sing it one more time. sing lift up shout of praise come on that's who he is the promise keeper come on we sing lift your voice right there wherever you are wherever you are come on we sing that is who you are. come on we lift our hands we lift our hearts with our families and our friends that is who wherever you are if you're by yourself that is who you are. come on he's worthy he is worthy Jesus is worthy. Hosanna in the high. Have we forgot that is who you oh, that. that is who you oh that is who you that is who you that is who you that is who you are. welcome to church online LOH live stream happy Sunday happy Palm Sunday Hosanna, save. Hosanna to God in the highest. We worship him today. We worship him this morning. Thanks for being with us. Hope you stay tuned. Right now we'll have an opportunity for each one of you guys watching to give. Um, we miss you guys. Uh, we have offering right now. So let's pray to the Lord. If you want to give, I, I believe there's a link. Uh, myoh.church slash give. Um, and may the Lord bless you. Father, I thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you that you're the promise keeper. Thank you that you've never left us. Even though we, we miss our family out there, God, we thank you that we're still able to do what we love to do and minister to them. I pray that you would go before them, go behind them, go beside them, and you would bless them. Bless every person that gives, Lord. And I know that you always do, but I just pray a supernatural blessing. May your face shine upon them, God. May you be gracious to them and their children. God, we thank you. You are so good. Why don't you do this just for just one second? Why don't you grab the person's hand next to you? Say, God, we, we give to you. It, it might be out of abundance. It might be out of plenty, but it also might be out of poverty. But you give even in this season of heartache and you give in this season of hurt. Not because you know or you're in control, but because we know that when we give to Him, He's in control and He's my provider. And so we, we give to you, God, cheerfully because we know that you can do with it more than we ever could. And you have our jobs and you have our future all in the palm of your hand. We give it to you. We love you. Bless this day as we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless you as you give.
Bless you guys. Uh, my name is Dustin Wharton, and I'll be bringing the word. I hope you don't uh, flip to another social media platform. I hope you stay focused on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you are, and may the Lord bless you. Well, it's Palm Sunday, and I'm going to try to do my best to act like this room's completely filled. Um, God is so good. I'll, I'll preach to the camera as well. Uh, I just, I'm just so thankful we have the capability, so bless our media team, and uh, bless the church for giving so that we have an opportunity um, to present something and get something out to you guys. Um, I just want to tell you, church, we miss you. Um, it's messing with me. As pastor, it's messing with me as your brother in Christ. I want to see you. I saw Mr. Jeff Yoder at Lowe's the other day, and, <laughs> and I told him that I was preaching this week, uh, and he was like, I'm not, I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. And so I'm really excited to continue this series with you guys called The Shadows of the Cross. Pastor Tim and Pastor Sean preached last week, and I just want to continue along with where we're heading with a message entitled, The Sacrificial Servant, a life that costs you something. And when I was thinking about, you know, Pastor Tim kind of gave us some parameters of where we were going to go, um, you know, with Pastor Sean, with the Exodus and, and things like that. The, the direction we were heading into Easter, and mine was this, uh, I believe, suffering servant or sacrificial servant. And uh, I was praying over my message, thinking about my message um, this morning. And uh, honestly, I was like, man, kind of bummed out. I was like, I feel like we're at such a time with this COVID-19 thing that people just need some encouragement, right? We don't need to be hearing about, oh, the suffering and the sacrificial servant and, and the way, oh, we're supposed to serve and sacrifice. I want to give a word of hope to you. And I felt God whisper to my spirit, Dustin, you are giving a word of hope because my people all over the place, your community and LOH and the world are sacrificing things daily, are living a life that costs them something. And I want you to go and preach a message of encouragement and affirmation to say that that is the direction that God wants you to go. And the church said, amen, amen. So wherever you are, if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you're a mom or a dad or like my wife and you're pregnant and you're afraid and you're carrying this baby into a world of viruses and infections and all these things, fear not. Be not dismayed because the Lord is with you. 
The Lord goes before you and beside you. And the Lord wants to encourage your heart today, no matter what. That's, that's what He does. That's who He is. Here's what I believe. I believe that we're called to live like Jesus. In this time, we're called to live like Jesus. And I want to illuminate that a little bit. Let's turn to our Bibles in Luke chapter 9. And that's where we'll get started. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. I'll give you some time to open up your phone, to put down that donut and open up your Bible. Don't spill that coffee on the Bible. Man, it's, it's kind of nice going to church at home, isn't it? A little bit? No, you miss us. You miss, you miss being here. Oh, man, I, I, there was one video on uh, Facebook. It was like, I think Tanya Pressman shared it. I'm not on Facebook right now, but Dad showed me. It's like the, what the first Sunday is going to be like when we all come back to church. It was like Chris Farley going like crazy, like ah, just going up to everybody. Uh, stay six feet away. <laughs> I'm going to need you to laugh through the computer screen so I get this. That, this, this helps me. All right, where was it? Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says this, and he said to all, this is Jesus talking, listen to this, we've heard it before, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So whoever would save his life, I'm reading in the ESV, I'm sorry if you're in the NIV or whatever, I'm reading in the ESV, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it or will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his soul, his soul or himself? This is Jesus' call to his disciples in this time period about 2,000 years ago. But this is also his call for us today to carry our cross. And what that means, I want to talk about in a little bit. But right now, let's just bow our heads and pray and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts. Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord. We, we give you this time right now on this Sunday morning on our computers or on our TV screens. And setting time aside, even though we can't come inside of a building, we know you're not limited to that. God, would you speak to our hearts? We are open. Go ahead and say it there right now. God, would you speak to my heart? I am open and I'm receptive for what you want to say. God, do it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. I, hey, I heard you. I heard you on your Mac computer. I, I heard you say Amen. So, I like to ask a lot of questions, get you responding. But there's no one in this room, and so I'm going to have to just... Just bear it, Dustin. I'm just going to have to bear this, this cross or this burden. So I have these honeydew lists. How about you? Anyone? And, and the wife nudges the husband, and the husband nudges back. Now, I don't know. I, I have these honeydew lists. I've, I've been doing work, you know, on the weekends and just working a lot, ready for this baby coming. Guys, I have a baby girl coming, and I'm so excited. Go ahead and clap. Don't hold your applause. I'm really excited. I'm going to cry like crazy when she comes. The name has yet to be disclosed, um, so I'm not allowed to spill the beans on that. Um, but I have a lot of housework to do. I do, and it weighs on me, and I, and I think about it. I think about it a lot. I don't know. It, it, it kind of reminds me of school. Like, uh, I used to procrastinate a lot. Like, I would have an essay due, like, the next day. I don't, I don't know about you, but that, that was me. I was like, this, this is what I have to do. And it's like, it's, it's, not, it's not a good feeling like that. Or, or what about like when, when Jesus returns or Jesus comes back? I don't think we talk about it a lot in, in today's church, um, right or wrong, I don't know. But when I was a kid, I always thought about the rapture. Anyone? It's like a scary word. The rapture is not even in the Bible, I don't think. And we talk, we talk about the rapture. And I had, this, I had this wager with God when I was a kid, and I was like, God, I, I just want to make it to be 16 years old where I have a girlfriend and I can drive a car. Like, like that was my wager. I think it was, it was probably because our parents, right, like, Brooke, we weren't allowed to date until we were 16. And so it was like this, this place, which isn't a bad thing. I'm a youth pastor. I'm like, man, if you're a guy, like, just, like, 
have a relationship with sports or music or something right now. Like, like that can wait. Prepare yourself. And Josh is nodding his head right now. Go ahead, brother. Go, <laughs> go ahead. But anyways, we think about this. If you, if you do really think about this, that we have things we have to do before Jesus comes back. Maybe you have your bucket list. You want to travel to every country in the world, whatever it looks like. Um, but there are some things that the Bible tells us, and, and what I feel we're supposed to do before Jesus comes back. We are. And so what does that look like? If, if, if what I think is we're supposed to become more like Jesus. In the simplest way that I can phrase it. Before Jesus comes back, the church and us as individuals, as dads, moms, brothers and sisters, and, and family, friends, and sons and daughters, whoever you might be, is to become and to represent Jesus more clearly. And what does that look like? Jesus came to do two things. He came to do this, apart from, you know, obviously revealing the Father and things like that. Jesus came to, number one, seek and to save that which was lost. That's Luke 19, verse 10. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And then Mark 10, 45, and this is the point we're going to talk about for the rest of t today, this morning, not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. I want, I want you to think about this. The creator of the universe, the God of all creation, came to the earth as, as a human being and came not to be served, but to serve. As pastors, as people of a part of God's family, as husbands, as wives, as brothers, as sisters, as friends in school, as teachers, whatever you might be doing, we're called to become more like Jesus, and we're called not necessarily to... Jesus, Jesus was served. He was served, but we're not called to come... To, to be served, but to serve and to give our lives as a ransom for many. And if we look in Luke chapter 9 again, let me read this one more time. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I want you to think about that idea. So if Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, we're called to do the same. And if Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom, to give his life, we're called to do the same. And we're also called to do it in this manner, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross daily and follow me. I don't know if you've ever heard someone say that, like I'm just bearing my cross. I'm just taking up my cross. And, and I got to be honest, like, like I don't have too much bad things to say about it, but sometimes it seems like self-righteous or even like, this like, yeah, like self-righteousness or, se or even selfish. Like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bear this cross. I'm going to bear my cross. But what I think Jesus is talking, I think Jesus changes the meaning of carrying the cross. If you think about it in this time period where people are carrying their cross, a lot of them are murderers. A lot of them are bearing their own weight or the, it's their own personal discipline. And Jesus changes it from that to a selfless act of servitude. Think about it. Jesus' cross was not for himself, but for others. And your cross is to be the same. This is important. Some of us feel we have crosses to bear. But they are... Oh man, I, I don't want you to shake out of your slippers this morning. But they are just life consequences of our sins. They were not intended by God. Your sins have been completely forgiven. Is there a place of dying to sin? Of course. But you're not carrying the cross to simply die for your sins. No, Christ did that for you. As Christ carried the cross for you, you carry the cross for others. Think about it. Jesus' yoke is easy. His burden is light. But Galatians 6 verse 2 says this, Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Think about it. Jesus' cross was not for himself. 
It was a selfless act of servitude. So what's the shadow? We've been talking about shadow of the cross of the Old Testament and how it reveals Christ. You remember Jesus said that the Scripture testifies about me. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Old Covenant. And although the Old Testament and stuff, we can get like a little bit confused about it, there are a lot of great themes, a lot of shadows, if you will, that show a lot about Christ. And I want to talk about Hosea and Gomer in a minute, but I want you to think before that about everything in your life that has a cost. Because I'm talking about being a sacrificial servant, and I'm not wanting to insult your intelligence. I know a lot of you guys are living lives of sacrifice. Sacrificing for your kids, sacrificing for your family. Think about everything that has a cost. I'll just list a few. Worship. Worship has a cost. Do we know that, church? David said, I will not give to God something that costs me nothing. David messed up a lot in his life, but he was a man after God's own heart. And I believe it's because he was a worshiper. Worship has a cost. Marriage and and even singleness has a cost. To be devoted to that one person. John Bevere says this amazing, I want to share it. He says that when you uh, vow to that person at the ceremony, it's like Jesus in the church, and you vow to serve them the rest of your life. And you might be sitting in a room right now that's even uncomfortable. Your husband might not even be watching this stream with you. I don't know what it feels like. But, but I want to just challenge you to be like Christ. To lay your life down for those who don't even deserve it. Now, if it's, if it's abusive or, or physical of that nature, yeah, you, you might need help. But if you're in a relationship where both of you guys have committed to each other before God, you are called to serve that person the rest of your life. And it's, and it's honestly an amazing, amazing opportunity. I just want to bless you today. I want to encourage you today. Because maybe, and I, and I have parenting, I have friendship. Maybe you're in this time with this COVID thing and you, and you have to be home a lot. And, and you can't let, let the workaholism like distract you from being a good husband. Or you can't let the workaholism distract you from being a good dad or a good mom. And the reality is you can think about some moments like this and Dustin asks you, what do we have to become before Christ comes back? And you're like, I haven't even thought about that. But now you have a moment that God has created for you and even for me to think about my life and think about where it's going. Think about whether, it, am I just up in the sky or am I down in reality? Where Jesus says we have to be this way. We're, we're called to be servants. We're called to lay down our lives. Everything has a cost. I'll keep going. Marriage, singleness, parenting, friendship, work, fitness. I had to add that in there, of course. No, but being healthy for your kids, it's important. All of it's important. It all has a cost. And even finances has a cost. When we give to God. It's, it's not, it, that, that's the smartest thing we can do is give to God. You say, well, that, that, don't, that don't make sense. I know a lot of things in the kingdom do not make sense. The first thing Jesus stand up and says is, blessed are the poor in spirit. I mean, think about it. The kingdom is, is so upside down. So we are called to carry each other's burdens. I don't want it, you to be uninformed that the kingdom of God comes with a cost. But it's not disappointing. It's an opportunity to, to live your life. I'm not even talking about salvation right now. I'm talking about being the church. I'm talking about being the body. Being the people that God wants us to be. Yeah, you can be saved, but you can be the most selfish person in the world. And I'm not going to bank my life on that. I want to live more like Jesus. How about you? So let's talk about the shadow. This story of Hosea and Gomer. So we turn in our Bibles to Hosea chapter 1. Um, if you know this story, uh, oh man, it's, it's just an amazing story. With um, th- there's, there's some a little bit confusing prophetic uh, poems within it, but it's an awesome story if you, if you grab the gist and if you can see Jesus in it. So there's this man called Hosea. He's a righteous man. He's a prophet. Tries to do things right according to the ways of God. Keeps himself pure. God honors him. And God 
tells him, asks him to do this extraordinary thing. A thing a lot of us, I don't know if we would have the courage or the strength to do or even to say, God, we believe that you want this. God, am I hearing you correctly? Hosea chapter 1, verse 2, it says this, When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman or a harlot and have children with her. Go marry her. Go vow yourself to her that you'll serve her the rest of your life and have children with her. For like an adulterous woman, can you see the shadow? Adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. This is crazy. This is unheard of. But I pray as we read over these scriptures and we see, I pray that you're able to see the shadow of what Jesus has done for us. So they, they, they conceive and God blesses them with the son. Then they have a daughter. And the Lord says, so they have a son, they have a daughter. I will show love to Judah, this is verse 7, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord, their God, will save them. It's amazing. Then they had another boy. So they have a boy, they have a girl, and they have another boy, and the Lord just seems to be blessing them. But she goes back to her old ways. Gomer returns back into her ways. Um, we know this but by what's said further. And I, and I don't know. I don't know. It, it's up for debate what Hosea's response is in this moment. I mean, is he, is he thinking like, okay, good. Now she's gone. Now I no longer have to deal with this. So this, this person that I'm worried about. Think about it. Every morning I wake up. She has this past and stuff. Is she ever going to return back to that place? And then she ultimately does. And you say, okay, well, God, you just wanted me to have these kids. And so now that this wife isn't really serving me, it's okay. She can just go back to her old ways. Is that the way it works? <laughs> it says this in chapter 3, verse 1. The Lord has said to me, go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Oh my gosh. This righteous man. Get the picture. I want, you to, I want you to go there in your head. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. This is crazy to me. You know, we're here on Palm Sunday morning. And we're talking about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Jesus essentially does the same thing. Jesus tells His disciples weeks earlier that He's going to go to Jerusalem and ultimately die. Be crucified by these people, even the religious folks. And He goes into that town anyways. It reminds me of Hosea going back into the place of where God intended Adam and Eve and the people that He's created to live and to walk with Him. And Jesus returns back, even knowing, knowing that they're going to crucify him. So back to Hosea. Hosea goes, and it says this in verse 2 of chapter 3. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver. So we know there that she was a slave. She was in bondage. She was back in her old ways of prostitution, but this time she was on the selling post and she was getting sold. Who would ever want me? Who would ever want this person? This ragged and ridiculous person? I had this righteous man. Maybe, maybe that's your life. And you're here and you're exposed with your sin and your shame. And it's just on the pedestal. Everyone can see it. Who would ever want me? And here you are. And Hosea comes, he says, I want to buy you this righteous man. This man has never done anything wrong. I want, to, I want to buy you. And Jesus says the same thing. You say, you say but what? Hosea, like, she was already yours. 
right? Like, like when you vow, there was, there was no divorce. Like, she's already yours, and you're willing to pay for her. Well, it's the same thing with Christ. The Bible tells us the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in Psalm 24, verse 1. And so everything is God, but God is willing to lay down His life and still pay the price for you. This is the sacrificial servant. This is what Christianity and Jesus is all about. So he goes and he buys her, even though she's already his. And he says, you are to live with me many days. And he says to you, God says to you, you must not be like a prostitute where you sell yourself to whoever will have you or be intimate with any other person. And I will be loyal and I will behave the same way towards you. I want you to think about this. When Jesus came on that Palm Sunday, I don't know if it was Sunday. Sorry, I, I don't know if it was or not. But when He came and the people were there in Matthew 21, and they were, they were singing, Hosanna. They were singing what it means is just save. It's an exclamation. It's a, it's a praise to God. They were saying, Hosanna, save to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. They said, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. But listen to this, listen to this. Jesus already knew that those people that were declaring Hosanna wouldn't be there with him at the cross. Ultimately, they would be there to crucify him. And we have this story of Hosea and Gomer in the shadow of the cross. And we see that they have this moment of intimacy. And they have this series of, of life together. But ultimately, Gomer turns. But listen, after the people turn, Jesus still has an opportunity to turn away. And he doesn't. Jesus still prays, if there be any other way, but God, I want your will to be done. I want to have all the children in heaven with us on that day. And Jesus rises again. Praise be to God for us. That he didn't give up. That he was willing to be the sacrificial servant. That he was willing to lay down his life. And let me tell you, before Christ comes back, we're called to ask him to help us to do the same. And so, I want to continue just with a couple more points in the final about five minutes. And Tucker, you can come up and play. Um, when, I, when I would write essays in school, they would tell us, you know, when you're writing some sort of persuasive argument, something to help your argument is to bring a counter-argument um, and, and address the counter argument. And so when I'm talking about being a sacrificial servant, that all of us are supposed to be a part of this. Everything has a cost. And as a dad and a mom, you say, well, what about this verse? Matthew chapter 9, where Jesus quotes Hosea. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. And He says to the righteous people, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Well, that's pretty straightforward, doesn't it? I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Where does Jesus come with this? I don't desire, here's what I believe. I don't believe Jesus wants us to be consumed with sacrifice. That's not what it's about. Like I said about the people saying, oh, I'm just carrying my cross and it can sound a little selfish. No, that's not what we're supposed to be consumed with. We're supposed to be consumed with love and mercy. God's tender, loving kindness. Listen, mercy is the motivation for sacrifice. Think about it. Mercy is the ignition. When God gives to Hosea the love, the only way he's willing to pay is because of the mercy that he has in his heart. If sacrifice is the goal, it can be selfish. That's the law, and it kills. My response is this. Romans chapter 12, 
Verses 1 and 2, it says this. This is Paul. Therefore, I urge you. I think this will illuminate my point even farther. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. If you focus on God's mercy, it says in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Focus on what Jesus has done on the cross. Then out of that, out of his great love, his kindness leads you to repentance. Everything that you do of cost comes out of in view. So he says, go and learn what this means. Focus on mercy. And then out of that, watch what happens. So he says, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. If you have this question with God, what am I supposed to be before you come back? There's your answer right there. His good, pleasing, and perfect will in view of the mercy of God attached to God. Now, what do you want me to give? Not out of obligation, but out of opportunity. And so my final point of all this is a scripture that none of you guys know. John 3, 16. And and that's your cue just to go. And just this is this is it. Th- this is it. If you need any any more um, if you need anything else for me to say, this is it. This is the sacrificial servant. If we're called to be like Jesus, if we're called to show the world and to re- represent him well. For God, this is mercy and sacrifice. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, we talk about God so loving all the time. But listen, God so loved, there is no so love without He gave. That's fluff. The talk, the I love you, but I don't do anything to support you and to be a part without the cost. I love you, so I give. I love my wife, so I give. I love my kids, so I give them time. I love my church, so I give them. I give opportunity. I give of myself. I love people, so I give. There's no I love without I give. That's the sacrificial servant. That's the shadow of the cross. And that's the life we're supposed to live. For God so loved the world. For God, come on church. For God so loved the world. But we don't stop there. That He gave. That He gave. So if you love your family, then give to your family. So if you love your church, then give to your church. If you love your kids, then give to your kids. That's the way it's supposed to be. This is the shadow of the cross. This is Jesus. And this is Christianity for us. A life that costs us something. But I feel at the end of this, and the band can come up, because this has been a call to each one of us, and I don't think I don't mean to insult your intelligence. I mean, some of you guys are on the front lines of giving. I mean, some of you nurses and stuff out there that you're you're seeing people over FaceTime and even even seeing people in person and doing all these types of things. I, I pray a blessing on you. I, pr- I pray a supernatural blessing on all those out there working. The Lord would provide for you. The Lord would keep you healthy and keep you safe. And that you be encouraged with this message. But I want to remind the entire church that it's always about Jesus. And it's always been about Jesus. When Jesus comes in to Jerusalem on that day and the people are are, are shouting, Hosanna, save! And blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. And they ask Him in Luke chapter 19, they say, Jesus, why don't you rebuke these people? 
And, Je and Jesus says, this is, I'm a worship pastor, so this is one of my favorite verses in all the scriptures. He says, if they stop, the stones will cry out. If they stop, why? Because they know he's worthy. They know he deserves it. Any sacrifice, any cost, he's worth it. Any moment of being faithful to your wife and your family, it's worth it. Any time of not leaving the church and coming in here and giving of your money and your, your hard-earned time and all spent, it's worth it. There's no cost too great for He gave it all to say you were worth it. And even today, I believe that if He had the opportunity, He would do it again because He wants your heart. And He wants His children and He loves His children. It's always about Jesus. And I feel like there's a response this morning of saying, Hosanna to God in the highest. Would you save your people? God, we might not be able to meet together, but Lord, we can still worship. Lord, we can still praise Your name. We can still lift our voice, lift our hands and say, Blessed is He. It's always been about You, Jesus. And we look to You, Father. And we love You. And we give You praise as we sing this song called Hosanna. We worship You. Bless You, church. I love You. Have a great day. And would you just would you stand in your room and just, just worship with us? Don't be embarrassed. Lift your voice. Let's sing out. Oh, it's a good day. It's a good morning. We thank you, Jesus, that you came. And then we're headed into Easter. God, God praise. God, I pray that you will bless your people. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Jesus is King. 